the rapture to their necks. I don't even know about it. Am I asking, am I thinking right? That you, am, am I remembering right that you had said that? Right. Yeah, I've said that. Um, okay. Yeah, I think, yeah, it's, um, so the Jews, the summary, they have the Jews, so the Jews have the Old Testament, they don't believe in the New Testament, but yet here we are raptured up, so yeah. why, why would the rapture cause them to believe? Yes. Um, I think if you go to Matthew 12, I think this is the right chapter, um, Yeah, Matthew 12, verse 38. So you mentioned that 1 Corinthians 1, the Jews require a sign, but the Greeks seek after wisdom. So uh, Matthew 12, 38 says, Matthew 12, 38, Then certain of the scribes and of the Pharisees answered, saying, Master, we would see a sign from thee. So there's your sign that the Jew, you know, Jews want, to, well, want a sign. Uh, verse 39, But he answered and said to them, an evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign. Okay, that is describing the Jews at the time, the Pharisees, and it's also describing them at the time during the dispensation of grace. Uh, that dispensation of grace, the Jews are really considered an evil and adulterous generation because they don't believe the gospel of grace to be saved. I mean, for the most part, they don't believe the gospel of grace to be saved. It's mostly Gentiles being saved. Like you said, they think, that you only have the Old Testament, that Jesus is not the Messiah, they don't uh, believe the New Testament. So you could consider the Jews as a whole, at least, in the dispensation of grace, are considered an evil and adulterous generation. So it says, An evil and adulterous generation seeketh after a sign, and there shall no sign be given to it, but the sign of the prophet Jonas. For as Jonas was three days and three nights in the well's belly, so shall the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. So it's saying that the evil and adulterous generation, the sign that they get is the sign of resurrection. Now for us, Romans 6, you look in Romans 6, uh, Romans 6 and verse 3, Know ye not that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ were baptized into his death. It's basically saying baptized means identified with. We're, the moment we believe the gospel, we're identified with Jesus Christ, we're identified with his death. Verse 4, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in newness of life, for if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall be also in the likeness of his resurrection. So those verses are talking about we've been planted into his death, so we are also in the likeness of his death. We are also in the likeness of his resurrection. So when, when we are raptured up, Christ was, Christ was resurrected 2,000 years ago. But our lives are hid with Christ in God. We're identified with his death. So we're also identified with his resurrection. So when we rise from the dead at the rapture, then it's really the body of Christ rising. And so when he says about Matthew 12 verse 40 about the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, so he's basically saying that the sign that the evil and adulterous generation is going to be given is the sign of the prophet Jonas. It's the sign of resurrection. And first, the first sign of that was Jesus' resurrection. But the full fulfillment of this is at the rapture. When the body of Christ is raptured up, since we are the body of Christ, we are identified in the likeness of his death. We are also identified in the likeness of his resurrection. So then we rise from the dead, that's at the rapture, that's also Christ rising from the dead since we are his body. Uh, so that is the sign given to the evil and adulterous generation. So Israel, the Jews right now, they're Old Testament, they, but they don't believe the New Testament. But when they see, because they're looking for a sign, 
And the evil and adulterous generation is going to get the sign of the rapture. And that's the body of Christ rising. And so then they'll then you'll then there'll be the, as Lenny likes to say, the aha moment. The light bulb goes off and they say, wait a minute, Jesus really was the Messiah. Because all of these people, I knew all these people, they said that Jesus was the Christ, and I said, no, he was just a good man. He was just a good prophet. He wasn't the Messiah. But now I've seen all those people who said that he was the Christ, and I've seen them rise from the dead. So that is the sign to the evil and adulterous generation that only believes in the Old Testament uh, that Jesus is the Christ. So that, that's really what's going to turn them, is the sign of the resurrection of the body, the rapture. And also, it's interesting if you look in Hosea chapter 6, because there's your Old Testament, um, and it seems like it's tied into this resurrection. Uh, Hosea 6, uh, verse 1. And of course, he's talking to Israel here. Hosea chapter 6 and verse 1. It says, Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn, and he will heal us. He hath smitten, and he will bind us up. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. I was talking to Israel there. Uh, they've gone away from the Lord earlier in Hosea chapter 1. God says, verse 9, Hosea 1 verse 9, uh, Then said God, Call his name Lo am I, for ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. So God says to Israel, uh, when he brings them out of Egypt, brings them into the promised land, he says, Ye are my people. And I am your God. And he gives them all the Old Testament there. They don't believe him. So then at the stoning of Stephen, Hosea 1.9 takes place. And he says, uh, Ye are not my people, and I will not be your God. So when you come to Acts 7, God sets aside Israel's program. But then verse 10 says, Yet the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, which cannot be measured nor numbered. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there it shall be said unto them, Ye are the sons of the living God. So Israel is God's people. Then at the stoning of Stephen, they are, Lo am I, they are not my people, and I am not their God. But yet once the dispensation of grace is over, then the number of the children of Israel shall be as the sand of the sea, and ye are my people, ye are the sons of the living God. Connected with Hosea 6, he says in verse 1, Come, let us return unto the Lord. So they are not his people, starting with the dispensation of grace, at stoning of Stephen. They're no longer God's people, but yet they're going to return to the Lord. Verse 2, Hosea 6, 2, After two days will he revive us. If you take a day of the Lord with the Lord as, as a thousand years, then you could say that two days would equal 2,000 years. And this is just an educated guess. I can't say this for certain. So that means that two, after the dispensation of grace is 2,000 years old, then they are going to, then the Lord is going to revive them. And the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. That would be the millennial reign, the 1,000 year reign. So you, and so you can see, and there's resurrection for them. So it seems like it just all ties together here. Hosea is a very good, after you understand the mystery in Paul, Hosea is good for a, a good, Hosea and Amos really, uh, good to understand some dispensational things there. So uh, he says, he gives the promise, you will not be my people, I will not be your God, but yet when that time is over, you are going to be my people. Well, how is it? Well, after two days he's going to revive us, he's going to raise us up. How is he going to raise us up? Well, the Jews require a sign. What's the sign? It's the rapture of the body of Christ, uh, as he said in Matthew 12. So, d does that help? Um, okay. Yeah, Eric, that helps. And they do read the prophet Jonas in the Old Testament. They do read that. Yeah, a Jewish Old Probably Testament. Matthew. Yeah, a Jewish Old Testament has the same books as ours. It's just in a different order. Okay. Um, the. Um, the, the prophets, what we call the minor prophets, are called, I think they're called the writings of the Twelve, or maybe just called the Twelve. And uh, they appear 
so they're in they're, uh, Hosea through Malachi appears last for us in our Old Testament and they're all separate books they're 12 books but in a Jewish Old Testament it's all lumped together as one book but it's all still there so they wouldn't turn to the book of Jonah they turned to the writings of the 12 and they'd see Jonah in there Hosea, Jonah, uh, Amos all of those in there yeah okay when the, when the dead in Christ rise first, will people see that, or will that all be spiritually, they'll be caught up into the clouds, and then we'll meet them in the clouds, and will the graves, like, open up, or will, will people know that the dead in Christ have risen? Will people that are left on the earth, will they know that the dead in Christ have risen from the graves? Well, I would think at least for those who are alive, it says there's going to be some who are alive and remain. We'll be caught up together with them. Uh, I think, we, and Philippians 3 tells us that our vile body is fashioned like unto his glorious body. So that means that here I am, let's say it happens today. Right? I'm here in my flesh. Um, it's going to be changed to a, to a glorious body and it's going to be raptured up so my flesh goes up, but my clothes it doesn't tell anything about the clothes, but you got to assume they're going to stay here because the glorified body is going to have a clothing of light. It wouldn't have this shirt and pants and you know socks, those things. Uh, so at least for those who are, you got a family and one person is saved and the rest aren't saved, um, they would see that in person. Okay. So they would see that the clothes are there. Uh, with social media and the way things are, uh, even if it's, you know, like me, I'm, I'm by myself at home. So if the rapture happens, no one's going to see the clothes, but they may see it, you know, a few days later. Someone investigates the neighbor, and uh, even if they don't see that, well, there's going to be pictures on YouTube and Facebook or, or whatever is around at the time. So you know how things spread on social media. So they would, at least for the ones who are alive and remain, there's going to be pictures and video and different things out there. Um, I would think there would probably be actually some video evidence of it when you consider like in China, they got cameras everywhere. They're trying to do that here um, and other countries as well. So you got to figure there's going to be at least some members of the body of Christ where our cameras on them, some footage of it, and they would actually see the body just disappear and the clothes fall on the ground and then that's going to be spread all over the media so I think that's how it's going to happen the dead when he talks about the graves um, yeah I don't know how that you know if there's going to be any physical evidence from that uh, look at Paul for example his body is decayed by now I mean he's been dead almost 2,000 years what's the physical evidence Lana hers was cremated you don't really see her body so um you know, if you were at the grave of, say, Charles Spurgeon, would you actually see a hole? Well, that's probably not. His body is decayed to the point. I don't think that, uh, I don't think there's going to be physical evidence at cemetery. A lot of times I think people, at least in churchianity where I grew up and what, you, what I heard is, oh, well, you go to the cemeteries and they're going to see all this evidence. I don't think the evidence is going to be at the cemeteries. I could be wrong. I think the evidence is going to be with the people who are alive. And there may not be a lot of us, but with everything being worldwide the way it is, uh, you know, there's going to be vi and video surveillance and everything. I mean, 5G networks are out now, and that allows unlimited video storage in the cloud. So you could just have cameras everywhere. Uh, that's not good. I don't want people watching me, but when it comes to the rapture, maybe that is a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, they'll be able to see those signs. And a lot of the... Uh, I think, I uh, could be wrong, but I think Israel is pretty advanced in their technology. So, you know, I would think a lot of them would be seeing these videos and see, you know, here's somebody who was standing here and they're just gone. And every instance of these people, they're people who were Christians. So, you, you know, if you're seeking for the truth, God is a reward of those who diligently seek Him. And so I think the Jews will finally have their eyes open. I think they're going to have video evidence of people who are raptured up, not the uh, not the cemeteries, but it'll be for people who are alive. Okay. So, thank thank you, Eric. And you do think many Jews will believe pretty soon after the rapture? You do feel that that many will believe then? Yeah. Time. If you go to Romans chapter nine, 
Paul talks about that. Um, in fact, he's, he quotes Hosea, what we just read in Hosea 1. Uh, he quotes it there, uh, Romans 9, verse 25 and 26. Uh, he says, Romans 9, 25, As he saith also in Osi, that's Hosea, I will call them my people which were not my people, and her beloved which was not beloved. And it shall come to pass that in the place where it was said unto them, Ye are not my people, there shall they be called the children of the living God. Isaiah also crieth concerning Israel, Though the number of the children of Israel be as the sand of the sea, a remnant shall be saved. So that's what we've just been talking about. But notice what he says in verse 28. For he will finish the work and cut it short in righteousness, because a short work will the Lord make upon the earth. So when he says it's a short work, what it sounds like for us, the body of Christ, it's taken 2,000 years for the fullness of the Gentiles to be come in. From the time of Acts 9 with Paul to where we are now, 2,000 years. Um, Israel, it's going to be a lot shorter. He's saying it's going to be a short work as opposed to ours, which is a 2,000 year period. Um, Israel, that's going to be a short work. Uh, so uh, I don't know. how. I just know from Revelation 7 that by the time you get halfway through the tribulation period, there are 144,000 Jews who are believers. So by the t from the time of the rapture to the time of halfway through the tribulation period, however long that is, a period of years, not 2,000 years, but a, a short number of years, according to this verse, there are 144,000 that are saved. So it's going to be, um, you know, it may take a whole generation. It may be 40 years you know, there is a gap in between the 69th and 70th weeks of Daniel. Uh, the 70th week doesn't start the moment that we're raptured up. It starts with the signing of the seven-year covenant, Israel signing that covenant with the Antichrist. And it's going to take years to get to that. But because it says it will be a short work, and it cuts it short in righteousness, uh, it's not going to be 2,000 years. It may be uh, a generation, 40 years is a good guess, I think. Uh, but it, it could be longer than that, but uh, probably not much longer. Uh, so, yeah, it'll be a, a short work. It'll be a lot quicker, certainly, than the 2,000 years with the body of Christ. Thank you, Eric, so much. That was great. Yeah, I've always felt that, Eric. I'm glad you and I agree on that. It, to me, it feels like there should be like maybe a generation between the signing and the rapture. And uh, because... You think of the 40 years, the, the unbelievers didn't enter into the promised land, so possibly a new generation will be exploring the Word of God, will be looking, and and just, you know, when we think of when the Lord rose again, the stone wasn't rolled away to let him out, right? So right. I think the, the rapture is going to be much like that. And you remember when, uh, I don't know if this has any bearing on it, but when the Lord spoke to, to Paul, those they didn't those that were with him only heard like a thunder. They didn't hear what was being said, right? Yeah, they didn't hear the Lord's voice. Right. No. So we're waiting to hear his voice. The rest of the world isn't. So possibly there may be thunder or something, but it, it won't be more of a secret resurrection. Yeah, it says, you know, it says the Lord shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. So those things are going to happen. But, um, yeah, what will they hear? The people around Paul didn't hear Jesus' voice. Uh, Jesus says in John 10, my sheep hear my voice. I call them out by name. I realize that's Israel, but um, I, I would say that would apply for us as well. If he comes with a shout, I doubt they're going to hear the shout. But if the Lord of the whole earth shouts and there's a trumpet blown, uh, it could be thunder and lightning is what they, they right. you know, it thunders. You know, when the, in John 12, when the, uh, when the Father spoke, uh, it's interesting, they said, uh, it, no, let me get the verse, because that, it mentions that. It says, um, John 12, 28, Jesus says, Father, glorify thy name. Then came there a voice from heaven saying, I have glorified it and will glorify it again. 
The people, therefore, that stood by and heard it said that it thundered. Others right. said an angel spake to him. So a voice of God, from, and they actually hear it, but to them it was like thunder. Right. Um, I, yeah, I think and when you read Revelation, it talks about thunders and lightnings and things proceeding from the throne. So it's probably going to be like loud thunder. They probably won't hear, you know, this, the call. I would think the shout would be, the shout is like, come up. It's probably what it is. And they won't actually hear that because they're not coming up if they're unbelievers. Uh, but, they, but if the Lord shouts from heaven and, there's, and he blows a trumpet, uh, it's going to be loud. So maybe they don't hear the distinction of the trumpet or the distinction of the voice, but, they, but it's like a thunder to them or maybe like a lightning. So, yeah, that's what Sorry, I would think. I just, I just wanted to interject that. Sorry. No, and that's good. And I think the, the 40 years is a reasonable guess because in your Bible, you see that appearing time and time again as a number of probation. Uh, 40 days and nights it rained in Noah's day. 40 days was Moses upon the mount getting the instruction from God. Israel in the wilderness, 40 years. Uh, 40 days Jesus tempted in the wilderness. Uh, and there are several others as well. But yeah, the, the number of 40 seems like that's the trying period of the probation. So it makes sense that it would be 40 years. And we know from Daniel 11 that there are periods of years before the signing of the seven-year covenant with the Antichrist. We don't know how many, but there are years that pass. So it does make sense there would be a 40-year a uh, probation time period between the rapture and the 70th week of Daniel. So, yeah, good, very good. I, I appreciate those uh, comments, Ernie. That's very good. I just want to chime in real quick on this topic. Um, it just seems like today's world with social media, with Hollywood, it's hard to believe that Jewish people can't understand, I've never heard of the rapture. Because even the many Jews that work in Hollywood do movies probably about Christian movies. And uh, so it's just weird that they would be so willfully, I think willfully ignorant, they don't even want to admit it to themselves, but they know it's there. They right. see it in YouTube. They see it all over the place. And uh, it's their choice. It's, a, it's funny, too, how our Senate Majority Leader, Chuck Schumer, who's Jewish, used an analogy about a week or so ago about confirming the, uh, the, the lady, I call it KJB, some Jackson Brown, to the Supreme Court, how... They rolled the stone away so she could come out and be more open to the American way of life the way we are today. It's like, wait a second, you don't even believe what you're saying, and yet you're using that. How bad, how bad is that? So. Yeah, it's like they're making her out to be the Savior when Jesus is the Savior. Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah, it is bad. I don't know if y'all heard that or not, though. Yeah. I didn't, but yeah, that's, that's oh, yeah. bad. I forgot, you don't want us to do this. Yeah, that's Good right. For you. Good for you. But yeah, he said that. Yeah, okay. Fake Jew. Yeah. Just like Biden, Pelosi, all the others fake Catholics. Right. They don't mean what they say. Yeah, yeah they do it to, it's all about the power. And so if that's uh, what gives them power, they'll say they're Catholic. But when it's, but when they've got an agenda against it, well, they don't mind going against it. Yeah. <laughs> Thank, thank you, Apostle. Thank you, Apostle Tom. Appreciate that. Yes. Ernie just promoting you to Apostle again. Peace and grace to you all. <laughs> all right, everybody. Uh, yeah, Lenny and Lisa and Jerry stay on, but uh, so we can talk about the conference. But everybody else, uh, have a good night. Hope you can join us Tuesday for our first lesson in the Sound Doctrine, Romans one. So, uh, if not, we'll see you Saturday at the conference, Calvinism. So. Have a good night, everybody. See you next time. Lenny's saying he loves y'all.